Hello, this is Rewind, Relax, Release. I'm your host, Delina. This episode will be geared for sleep, so feel free to go ahead and start getting comfortable. Go ahead and make sure that your pillow is just right and adjust your blankets and settle in for a good night's sleep. And so as not to disturb your sleep later, I want to thank you for listening. And I would like to invite you to rate, review, and subscribe. It really does help if you do those things and share this with any of your friends that might enjoy it. If you have any questions, comments, or episode suggestions, please feel free to email me at rewindrelaxrelease at gmail.com. Thank you for listening and take care of yourself. You're worth it. Now let's get started. This episode is a reading of an essay by Helen Keller titled Relative Values of the Senses. Relative Values of the Senses I was once without the sense of smell and taste for several days. It seemed incredible, this utter detachment from odors, to breathe the air in and observe never a single scent. The feeling was probably similar, though less in degree, to that of one who first loses sight and cannot but expect to see the light again any day, any minute. I knew I should smell again sometime. Still, after the wonder had passed off, a loneliness crept over me as fast as the air whose myriad of odors I missed. The multitudinous subtle delights that smell makes mine became for a time wistful memories. When I recovered my lost sense, my heart bounded with gladness. It is a fine dramatic touch that Hans Anderson gives to the story of Kay and Gerda in the passage about flowers. Kay, whom the wicked magician's glass has blinded to human love, rushes away fiercely from home when he discovers that the roses have lost their sweetness. The loss of smell for a few days gave me a clearer idea than I had ever had what it is like to be blinded suddenly, helplessly. With the little stretch of the imagination, I knew that what it must be when the great curtain shuts out suddenly the light of day, the stars, and the firmament itself. I see the blind man's eyes straining for the light as he fearfully tries to walk his old rounds until the unchanging blink that everywhere spreads before him stamps the reality of the dark upon his consciousness. My temporary loss of smell proved to me, too, that the absence of a sense need not dull the mental faculties and does not distort one's view of the world. So I reason that blindness and deafness need not pervert the inner order of the intellect. I know that if there were no odors for me, I should still possess a considerable part of the world. Novelties and surprise would abound. Adventures would thicken in the dark. In my classification of the senses, smell is a little the ears inferior, and touch is a great deal the eyes superior. I find the great artists and philosophers agree with me in this. Didret says, Here there is a French passage that I cannot read. friend whom I have never seen sends me a quotation from Simon's Renaissance in Italy. Lorenzo Gabilturi, after describing a piece of antique sculpture he saw in Rome, adds, to express the perfection of learning, mastery, and art displays in it. An art displayed in it is beyond the power of language. 
It is more exquisite beauties could not be discovered by sight, but only by the touch of the hand passed over it. Of another classic marble at Padala, he says, This statue, when the Christian faith triumphed, was hidden in place by some gentle soul who, seeing it so perfect, fashioned with art so wonderful, and with such power of genius, and being moved to reverent pity, caused a specular of bricks to be built, and there within buried the statue, and covered it with a broad slab of stone, that it might not in any way be injured. It has a very many sweet beauties, which the eyes alone can comprehend not, either by strong or tempered light, only the hand by touching them finds them out. Hold out your hands to feel the luxury of sunbeams. Press the soft blossom against your cheek and finger their graces of form. Their delicate mutability of shape, their pliancy and freshness. Expose your face to the aerial floods that sweep the heavens. Inhale the great draughts of space. Wonder, wonder at the wind's unweary activity. Pile note on note the infinite music that flows increasingly to your soul from the tactile sonorities of a thousand branches and tumbling waters. How can the world be shriveled when this most profound emotional sense of touch is faithful to its service? I am sure that if the fairy blade me chose between the sense of light and that of touch, I would not part with the warm, endearing contact of human hands or the wealth of form, the nobility and the fullness pressed into my palms. 